Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my sewing blog for the months of June, July, and August of 2022. It's been three months since I last did a vlog, so I thought it was about time that I hop on and give you a little update on what I've been up to this summer. So first off, I am in a different location. This is the kitchen of my house, um, or kind of kitchen adjacent. There is a heat wave in LA right now. It's about 85 degrees, which I know is not relatively that hot, but I don't have any AC. So I have a fan going on me right now to keep me kind of cool. Um, it's hot. And the sewing room is the hottest room in the house. So for now, I'm just avoiding it and hanging out in the coolest room with a fan on me. I have my ice water. I'm just, you know, doing what I can to stay cool until this heat wave ends. Anyway, let's start with what I made over the last three months. I actually made some garments for myself, which I feel like I haven't done a lot of this year. So it was really fun, really nice. First is this Miri tank top. This is view B and this is one of my patterns. Um, um, I actually haven't worn it yet, but I'm, I love this pattern. So links to this down in the show notes. Next is this quilted tote bag. And this I made for a tutorial that is going to go into my online class about improvisational quilting. And I just need to write it up and edit the photos and get everything together and post it. Um, maybe take some more photos of the bag, but I think it's really cute. I did matchstick quilting for the first time on this, and I really like how the uniformity of that, just they're just straight lines that are close together. I like how that um, just like kind of calms down the improv style of the bag. It brings some order to it. So this one is done, but I still need to write up the tutorial. Next, I made the Peppermint A-Line Maxi Dress, and this has wide straps and elastic at the back. And I made it out of this teal green linen that I was gifted by the fabric store when they had a shop here in LA. Um, they were really great and gave me a lot of fabric that I'm still working my way through. So this project I thought was gonna be really fast and really easy, but it turned out to really take a lot more time fitting. Before I put the elastic in, I tried it on and I thought the straps needed to be shortened. But then after I put the elastic in, I realized that the elastic really changes the fit and the straps were now too short. So I really had to do a lot of fiddling around to get the straps the right length and the elastic the right length. You know, cause I wanted the dress to be something that I could wear when it's hot out. So I don't want it to be too tight around here, but I wanted it to be tight enough. So it was like really a Goldilocks situation. And I was hoping to teach this dress as a class at this local studio, but I've really put that idea on hold because the fitting was just not as simple as I wanted it to be, unfortunately. So I think it's a really cool design. There are a lot of really nice details. Um, it's finished with fresh seams. There are side seam pockets that have a pretty interesting detail to them. It's, um, not quite sure what, we, what you would call it. It's like a cutout. So um, a lot of nice details, but tricky to fit, surprisingly. Last but not least, I made a pair of free range slacks. And again, this is from Linen from the fabric store. And this pattern is by Sew House 7. And it was just a dream to sew up. Um, I really like Sew House 7 patterns and, um, and Peggy's a friend, full disclosure, but I think she's an excellent pattern maker and um, writes the patterns really well. So everything went really smoothly. I've also made her patterns before, so I knew like what size adjustments I wanted to do. So just like the other things that I've sewn in the last three months, I have not taken photos of these, um, but I plan to, and I do plan to do a blog post about this too. 
So I've done a few videos over the past few months. I just want to recap them really quickly in case you missed them. The first one since my last blog is the third part in my Meet My Sewing Machine series, and that is about my vintage Singer Featherweight sewing machine. The second video is really a different style from what I've done before. I do a little making of the dress that I wore to Frocktails in May. Third, I did a video really for beginners that's all about the basting stitch, how to sew it, why it's useful. And then I did a video about understitching. Again, kind of the same thing as the basting. Like it's a good one for beginners to learn how to sew and understitch and why it's important. And finally, I did a video that shows how to sew the all-in-one facing for the Miri tank top that I showed you a little bit ago. The all-in-one facing creates a really clean finish. I'm actually wearing a Miri tank half right now. It's a dress. It's made out of rayon, so it's super cool. <laughs> it's helping me survive this heat wave. Um, so I will have links to all those videos down in the show notes in case you missed them. So on the personal side of things that have happened in the last three months, very sadly, my kitty fox passed away kind of mid-June. He was diagnosed with a heart condition in January 2020, and I was told that he had a year or two left to live at that time. So he actually made it two and a half years since that diagnosis, um, which is great. I'm glad I got him for so long. So it's still really hard to talk about without tearing up, but I wanted to share because he's been a part of my videos since the beginning. Um, so I know people would probably wonder, he was the best kitty. And it's still just too hard to talk about even <laughs> almost three months later. Okay, I'm gonna try to pull myself together. I didn't think it would be that hard to talk about, but... <laughs> Okay. In other news, I'm trying some new treatments for my migraines and I got Botox for migraine in August. It's like about a month ago and I think it's helping. Maybe it can take like three months or more to actually know if it's going to help, but I'm optimistic about it. The weird thing is that like my forehead doesn't move. <laughs> So that's just, when I look at myself in the mirror, I feel like I'm arching my eyebrows because I can't move my forehead, which is very odd. Um, but I'm, again, very optimistic that it will help the migraines and that I can just be more functional day to day. I had a couple of vacations over the past few months. Um, I went to visit some family in Northern California in July, which was really nice. And then at the end of August, I did a trip to Oregon, again, visited some families, spent some time at the coast, and I picked up a couple of sewing-related souvenirs. So first is this vintage pattern-making book, and I got this at Powell's for $19.50, and I'm pretty excited about it. It just goes through like a lot of different um, garments and how to draft them. I have a ton of drafting books, of course, but I like to pick up new ones, and especially vintage ones, just to kind of see how they were doing it because different books will have different techniques. So I have not really gotten into this one or read it yet, but I'm excited to check it out. Maybe for my, my next pattern, I'll have to definitely reference it and get some tips. I also got this beautiful wool fabric from the Pendleton Outlet Store. The store is on um, McLaughlin Highway 99, and every August they do a big remnant sale. Um, so the next time I go, I really need to make sure to go early in August because it was pretty picked over. But I found this really beautiful kind of blue, like olive and black plaid. And I'm gonna make a shirt for my boyfriend out of it. And then with the leftovers, I'm thinking I'll do some slippers for myself um, and maybe a Christmas stocking. I have, I think, three yards, so it should be plenty for all of that stuff. I also bought a lot of fabric in the past few months and I need to like cut myself off and go on a little like 
fabric buying diet um, because my stash was getting like pretty low and I had empty drawers, but now it's just overflowing again and I'm gonna have to figure out where to put all this fabric. But let me show you, there's some fun stuff. All right. <laughs> So most of it I got from the FITM scholarship store in downtown LA, including this camel colored sweater knit. Um, it's really nice and thick. I think like I often only find really thin sweater knits. So I like how thick this one is. And I had an idea for a cardigan pattern and um, like a cropped cardigan. I really want some cardigans that are shorter that can go under jackets. So I got this fabric to make that. Of course, you know, I have to draft it first and then I can make it. So it's a long process. And for, fortunately, I don't need a cardigan right now. <laughs> and then let's see. Okay. I got three other fabrics at the Fitum store and I love this store because I think everything was $3 a yard or somewhere around there, it's all pretty cheap and the profits go to help the students at the school. So this is a like really stretchy athletic fabric and there was a tag on it saying it was from James Purse, Pierce, um, from like 2019. And the selvage is pretty interesting. It has this rib at the selvage. So I'm also working on like a bra top pattern and I think this will be really great for that. Um, maybe I'll make some leggings from it. It's, it might even work as a swimsuit fabric, but I got, I think, two yards of this one. So that one is gonna be for samples. And same with this one, it's a blue Heather, um, like athletic t-shirt knit. Um, not quite as athletic as the other one. I don't think it has quite that much stretch, but I think it'll be great for like tank tops and t-shirts. And then I got this stretchy rib knit, which I think would be great for sweaters or turtlenecks or even like sweater dresses. And I think I got three or four yards of it. I don't know why I thought I needed that much, but um, it's just like, it's just a classic gray color. It's the kind of thing that I would really wear a lot of. And then I also got this fabric there and it was originally going to be for a dress, but I've now decided to use it to make the Rowena jumpsuit by Victory Patterns. Um, it's kind of a lightweight rayon and the Rowena has a like wrap front and an elastic waist that's made with elastic thread. Um, and then like wide like pants. So this is my next sewing project. I ironed it this, this, this morning. Uh, but it's just too hot to cut up there. So hopefully like tomorrow morning, it'll be cool enough and I can cut out the project. So I'm excited about this. It's for a little capsule wardrobe trip that I have coming up. Okay, then finally, these two fabrics are double gauze that I got from Joann's. And I got this one to make another A-line peppermint dress. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for that or not. And then this is a remnant of that same double gauze um, fabric. And the Joanna's I went to had a lot of colors. And double gauze is just like the yummiest fabric. It's so soft and I love how it's crinkly. So this would maybe work for a Lou box top. Um, honestly, this is probably not my best color, but I was just going like double gauze crazy at the Joann's and they had a remnant and I snatched it up. So, so I got this one. Maybe I should make something for a friend. As I mentioned, I have a trip coming up. I won a trip to Mexico. So I want to make the jumpsuit for that. And I have a couple other things planned. I have this um, athletic swimmer fabric that I got a few months ago from LA Finch and I wanna make a Maggie swimsuit. It's a pattern by Seamwork out of this fabric. Um, I made it, I made the top before, I haven't made the bottom, um, but I'll make both. And so I've already made it, I know I like it. I am going to do a full bust adjustment on my next one to give myself a little more room, um, but definitely wanna sew this up before Mexico. 
And my third slash fourth project from Mexico is a pair of Danny shorts out of this fabric. And the Danny shorts are patterned by True Bias with an elastic waist. Um, they just like, they look really cool and summery. So my plan is to do those shorts and a mirror tank top to have a little matching set. Um, this fabric, I think I also got from the fabric store when they were in LA and it's just a nice like cotton gingham. It's kind of like a dark brown or a black and then a tan. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about making some stuff just for me for fun. Um, I, I made the free range slacks before my trip to Oregon and it was a great little project to do to like give myself something special to wear on the plane and go on my trip. Um, I think it's a very common thing with sewists that we want to make new stuff when we're going on a trip. I'm trying to get some projects done and get some more patterns out there. I've not released a single pattern this year, kind of because it takes me so long to develop a garment pattern that I just haven't really had enough time. Um, I have a lot of other freelance work that keeps me busy. So I've been dabbling in designing some quilt patterns, um, which has been pretty fun. It's a different, like, it's not super different than the garments, but it feels a little more creative in a way because you get to play with color and pattern. Um, so maybe there will be some quilt patterns in the future. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun playing around with it right now. So, and I think that's really the important thing is to enjoy what I'm doing, um, whether it's like sewing for myself or designing patterns, I really just wanna be enjoying it. Because I always think if you're having a good time and happy while you're sewing, while you're making, that thing that you make is going to be imbued with those feelings and it's just going to be better. Like whenever I'm sewing and I'm angry or frustrated, it doesn't work out quite as well. So just trying to enjoy what I'm doing and not put too much pressure on myself and not like overwork myself. So my plans change a lot. <laughs> Well, I hope that you are all doing well. I will have links to all the things I talked about down in the show notes. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the like and the subscribe button down below. And if you want to stay up to date on everything I'm up to, the best place to do that is my newsletter. And I will also have a link to that down in the show notes. Happy sewing. Mm -hmm.